Good guys, you might have a here. I hope you guys all had a wonderful new new year break. I received the V1 Pro a couple of days ago. It was impressive. It has been a couple of years ever since I made a video about V1. This video will focus on the upgrade part about V1 Pro comparing with V1 so that it will help you guys to choose which one to go. To me personally, I feel the most significant upgrade is the extra small flash. It's called SU-1. To me, it's huge because that means there are two light source come with this V1 Pro and you can do so much about it. This little flash will act as a straight on camera flash. So V1 Pro can be bounced from all directions. It can be bounced from the ceiling, can be bounced from the wall, on the side, and it can be also bounced from the floor, from the bottom. So all of a sudden, you have two light sources. You can have a harsh on-camera flash with this SU-1, and you can have a diffused, softer light source with this round head coming from different directions. To activate the sub-flash, simply raise the head to 45 degrees or higher. Typical scenario one, you can bounce off the main flash of the wall behind you as a few lights. The small flash acts as a straight on flash to control the highlights, which defines her bone structure. How much softer fuel lights to mix with how much harsh key lights? That's your call. An indication I use is I start with the same ratio, that is half power with the main flash bounce off the wall and half power straight on flash over the subject and I will fine tune it from there. And then I'm going to use umbrella. Sometimes people are struggling to find a wall to bounce off, especially with outdoors. In that case, you can use umbrella. So here's a little switch between manual and TTL. A lot of times I shoot manual, but in the train, you know, the lighting is rapidly change. Sometimes it went to the tunnel, sometimes it's outdoor, sometimes the sun kisses in. I just use a TTL. The TTL is pretty accurate. I'm pretty much at the TTL zero. I find it works perfect as a few lights. Then I just use the SU-1, the little square flash, to bring out her skin texture, especially in the highlight areas. That makes her bone structure looks more 3D in a sense. In summary, I use little button to switch to TTL for the few lights. I use the front light to bring out the skin texture. Even with two lights, I only worry about SU-1 output from time to time. And I leave the round head at the TTL all the time. Here's another scenario. I'm going to use the round heads to bounce up the wall to mimic window light source. Now, I don't want a big window light source. I want a relevantly smaller window light source, almost like from Vermeer's painting, you know? So I use the grid to restrict light beam to mimic a smaller window. And SU-1 acts like a few lights for the shadow area.
besides bouncing off the wall, you can also bounce off the ceiling. The round head will mimic a large soft, you know, skylights coming over her, but that will also create some shadows under her eye sockets or neck areas. We typically call that a panda look. Here's where the little square flash comes handy that fills in the shadow area. So you have a combination of skylights and fuel light. Comparing with V1, a key improvement with V1 Pro is that even with more than 30, 40, 50 shots, the flash doesn't slow down with the recycling times. I was using the round head bouncing the setting with full power and the sub with half power as a free flash. So I can continue my photo shoots with a stable recycling time. Rather than compare with V1, the flash slows down after 30 shots with full power. V1 Pro can go up to 100 flashes without noticeable slowing down. So if you do continuously shoot with half power or full power all the time, V1 Pro will definitely worth the upgrade. You can also bounce off the button. And lastly, I find this beautiful corner at this coffee shop. Unfortunately, because we have to shoot after our, there's no more sound there. So I use AD1200 with BFP to create a pocket of sun that shines over Jennifer. And I just use the round head only this time to fill in the shadow details with her dress and everything. Another upgrade is charging the battery. Besides using VC26 USB charger, now you can charge the battery directly with the Type-C cable. In conclusion, here's a couple of improvements of V1 Pro compared with V1. Number one would be you can have two light setup in one flash. Not saying you need two light setup all the time, but every so often, if you need to create this multiple light source look, this comes really handy. Number two would be V1 Pro can continuously flash over 100 times with full power without slowing down much.
comparing with V1 at about 30 flashes. And then for me personally, I find the switch between TTL and the menu comes really handy when the light shifts rapidly. And lastly, no more chargers for me because the battery can be charged with a USB Type-C cable. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is your mind Aristotle. I will see you in the next video.